Perfect. I'm glad someone can hear me. So um, for anyone who's logging on, uh, tonight's Facebook Live for the American Migraine Foundation um, is on a topic that's a little bit lighter uh, than topics that we've had in the past. Um, it's about ice cream headache or brain freeze. Um, as headache specialists, uh, we use a diagnostic criteria um, from a um, group of diagnoses um, that's contained in the International Classification of Headache Disorders. And this is where we're able to determine what is the criteria for the different types of headaches that people have. And so in ice cream headaches or brain freeze headaches um, are called cold stimulus headaches. And so what is a cold stimulus headache or an ice cream headache? So based on the diagnostic criteria, there needs to be at least two episodes in which someone develops intense head pain almost immediately after the ingestion or the exposure to something very cold to the top of the mouth or the palate or the back of the mall. And typically this pain that occurs will um, last for about 30 seconds or so. Um, and by diagnostic 10 minutes of removal of that cold stimulus. What's interesting is that it's not just the fact that there is a cold stimulus that is present, but it's goes to the top of the palate or the top of the mouth in a very rapid fashion. So there was actually a study that was done where they took an ice cube put it to the top of the mouth or the palate and then they compared that to people who were drinking, um, rapidly drinking ice water, and they found that overwhelmingly actually developed a brain freeze more frequently than the people who just held an ice cube uh, to the top of their mouth. School children, um, and in these middle school children, um, there was 100 milliliters of ice cream, and they were told to either eat all of it in five seconds or they found that the individuals that had, uh, that ate all the ice cream in five seconds, they were the ones that did get uh, the ice cream headache or the brain freeze headache. What's interesting is that it doesn't even have to be something that you ingest or that you eat or drink, but it could actually be um, in inhalation of cold air. So there's actually been case reports of individuals who were surfing on a cold day and the inhalation of cold air triggered a brain freeze uh, type of headache. Um, there's also been case reports of people who are ice skating and the inhalation of that cold air rapidly uh, triggered these headaches. Like many of these um, less common headaches um, or these less frequently talked about headaches, these are actually more common in people who have migraine. And I think that that just uh, pours the hypersensitivity that the migraine brain may have, that they're more likely to have different types of headaches, more likely to have brain freeze headaches or ice cream headaches, more likely to have another headache type that's called primary stabbing headache. Um, and so that brain sensitivity is definitely um, present in people who have migraine. So some people may ask, um, why does ice cream headache occur? What is the mechanism that underlies this type of headache? So if anyone has ever uh, been outside in a cold day and your hands are very, very cold, and you rush inside and you, and you run your hands, your cold hands, under hot water, what is the first thing that you feel? In the majority of individuals, they actually first feel pain before there's any type of relief. And that's because the exposure to the change in temperature, especially an ice cream headache, results in changes in the blood vessels. In ice cream headache or cold stimulus headache, there is hypothesized to be a constriction of blood vessels and then a rapid dilation of blood vessels. And 
pain receptors are located in blood vessel walls. And so when blood vessels change in size, it can trigger pain. And so that's why we think that having changes in the blood vessels in the roof of your mouth can result in headache. Now, the other question is, roof of the mouth or the back of the throat, how is it causing a headache that occurs typically in the front of the head or the side of the head when that's not the area that's being exposed to cold? So that's another interesting thing that we can learn about ice cream headache is that it is a very um, good example of something we called referred pain, okay? So referred pain is when there is activation of pain receptors in one area that results in area. A very commonly discussed example of referred pain is when people will say, if you have left arm pain, think about a heart attack, or if you have jaw pain, think about a heart attack and make sure you get yourself checked out. That is an example of referred pain. And there are many hypotheses as to why referred pain happens. And the most common one is called convergence. So the theory is that the nerves that innervate the left arm and the nerves that innervate a similar region of the brain, and that's why the brain can't differentiate if it's heart pain or if it's left arm pain, and it just tells you you're having pain in your left arm. Similar thing happens in migraine, actually, that in migraine, sometimes people will say in their sinuses or they have pain um, in their neck, but actually it's going all to the same part of the brain where migraine is generated, headache, facial pain, as well as neck pain, and that's all coming from the same part of the brain. So in ice cream headache, the same thing is happening in ice cream headache, an activation of pain receptors in the roof of the mouth as well as the back of the throat. Um, it is referring the pain to the head, and so people will typically have a headache um, that is in the front of the head or in the temporal aspects of the head um, as a response to ingestion or inhalation of cold substances, whether it be ice cream or water or a milkshake um, or even cold air, such as the case in someone who's surfing in cold air or ice skating. All right, so there's some questions that we have which I would be happy to I see that I see that someone has made a comment that ice cream seems to help their migraine attacks. Very interesting observation. I think that one of the things that highlights is that everyone is very, very different and everyone's migraine attacks is very different. And sometimes people will find um, interesting um, home remedies for some of their ailments. Um, and especially if it's something as benign um, as ice cream, I think that that is a wonderful discovery uh, for Katie. So thank you for sharing that. Um, it's difficult for me to hypothesize a mechanism for how that would occur. If you, then that is absolutely wonderful. Now, Tim uh, Lada has, um, has uh, posed a question. Uh, Tim is during migraine. Um, so I suspect that Tim is actually mentioning what Katie just wrote um, about if um, having a brain freeze headache or triggering a brain freeze headache or ice cream headache um, can be helpful in migraine. Um, that's not something that has been studied, um, but um, it is uh, something that sounds like some people are doing. Uh, definitely, you know, there are, in different pain disorders, people have documented that having stimulation other uh, pain fibers or even activating other 
um, mechanoreceptors and touch fibers, that that might be helpful for reducing pain location. So that might be the way uh, that it might be working. So if there are any other questions, please post them. I'm happy to answer them. Um, again, to um, ice cream headache, some people have asked about um, what are ways to treat ice cream headache. I think obviously the most um, effective thing is trigger avoidance that you shouldn't eat ice cream, but it should just mean that you should eat ice cream slowly or whenever you're ingesting anything cold, um, ingest it very slowly. I've heard of some other home remedies, um, like taking your thumb and holding it to the roof of your mouth um, or um, taking your um, tongue and putting it those things have also not officially been studied. Um, I could imagine uh, that if you take the warmness of your hand or your tongue, that might help stabilize the temperature a little bit um, and relieve the pain uh, faster than it would um, if you still had the um, cold um, air um, in that location. Now again, as I mentioned, and since there's a couple questions about migraine, I'm happy to answer questions about migraine if anyone has. Again, mention that in people who have migraine, ice cream headaches or brain freeze headaches um, are a little bit uh, more common. Um, and I think that that's just a reflection of the um, in people who have migraine. Uh, they're more susceptible to having different types of headache disorders, uh, such as um, um, ice cream headaches, as well as other headache disorders, uh, such as primary stabbing headaches. Um, some people may ask, how common is a brain freeze headache or an ice cream headache? And the prevalence data uh, varies widely. Uh, studies, they find that the majority of individuals, up to 70, 80 percent of individuals, at some point in their life, has experienced an ice cream headache uh, when they've ingested cold substances quickly. Are there any other questions that anyone has? If not, I can just quickly summarize some of the key points that we talked about. Um, Dawn Barry Martin has um, indicated that uh, she is very susceptible to um, and I suspect uh, since you're on the American Migraine Foundation uh, page and the Move Against Migraine Facebook group um, that you have migraine headache and as mentioned that in people who have migraine they're more susceptible uh, to ice cream headaches or brain freeze headaches. So to summarize, uh, brain freeze headaches um, or ice cream headaches are cold stimulus headaches. Uh, these headaches occur uh, when there is a rapid exposure to cold uh, substances, either by ingestion or inhalation to the roof of the mouth or the back of the throat. Uh, they need to be exposed rapidly. These are typically short-lasting headaches. Based on studies, they last for seconds um, and occur immediately after exposure to that cold substance um, and they are likely a result of changes in blood vessel size which activates the pain receptors in the roof of the mouth and the back of the throat um, and activation of those pain receptors results in referred pain um, and that referred pain um, is in the front part of the head as well as the temples or the temporal regions of the head. And these headaches are more common in people who have migraine. It's trigger avoidance, but that does not mean you should not eat ice cream. I'm an ice cream lover myself, but it should just mean that you should eat it slowly. I'll give a couple more minutes for anyone to ask any questions if they have any. And if not, um, I am happy to sign off. I did post on the initial post my um, Twitter handle. So if you have any questions that come up later on, please feel free to uh, send me a tweet. 
um, and ask that question. I'd be happy to answer um, questions about brain freeze or ice cream headache um, or any other headache types in general. And with that, I will sign off. I'm happy to um, answer any other questions for you guys online. Bye-bye.